Hello, I'm standing at the location of the former railway station at Treblinka. Now, uh, what we can see here where the road is, the road um, it has been recently redone, uh, but there used to be a road and the railway line would run together. Uh, down here, where the vehicle is parked, my vehicle is parked, uh, that is the location of the sidings at which the trains were taken off and their people waited at the sidings there to, for the, the, the carriage which they were in to be pulled into the death camp where they were murdered. So they were taking people in stages, leaving them there waiting to die. I, I think there's also accounts of them also waiting at Malkinia as well. This is above all in the summer of 1942 when Ermfried Eberle was commandant and he was unable to control the amount of people he killed. More about that in a separate video. As I turn around here, we have got the original railway station. Now, I have said in other videos that there, um, another location was the railway station. That, in fact, was the signal operator's place. What we have here, somebody closing the door. Uh, and uh, there were three of these buildings. This building here is a Tsarist era building. This held the booking office for the railway station. There was another building down there. That one's gone. And if I turn around here, we can see that we've got this road which ran along the station. Cobbled road. This road also in this condition will, lead, will be from uh, Tsarist times. Now can hear that in the background we've got uh, some thunder. So I'll have to do this quite quickly. But there you go. There is a look at the former station. Uh, so that's where you want to buy a ticket to go somewhere. Now this was on a uh, line which was um, went to Malkinia, for example. So people actually knew it. Now Treblinka as a location was quite well known because a penal camp was set up there uh, in 1940. So people who were found guilty of something that the occupier didn't like were sent to there. It was built around a quarry. So that was Treblinka 1. Now, you can see the railway station itself is the other building from the railway station. It, it, would, it would seem also that during the Second World War, there were some Germans who were living here as well. And not only that, but uh, we have the accounts of the uh, resistance in the railway station, and I'll be doing more work on him and what he actually reported. So I'll do a separate video on that. He came to the conclusion that one million 293,000 people were murdered at Treblinka. Of course, that was from notes that he had kept from writing down what was written on the uh, wagons. And I think he assumed that was the amount of people that were inside. Anyway, I'll come on to that in a different video. I, I, I read his book about 30 years ago. 95 I read his book, so that was like 20, 29 years ago. And it's called In the Shadow of Treblinka. Sorry, it's called that in Polish. I don't know what it's called in English or even that's even ever been uh, translated for that matter. So, the camp itself is down here. So it's about four kilometers approximately from here. So they would take the, the, the wagons off, two wagons probably at a time, depends how many people were inside and they would take them to the camp and murder the people there. Now here, you see we've got this ditch. And uh, this, this road did exist. So if you came here before, earlier, you may remember this, this road being here. But there's another road which was built by uh, the Germans around probably even before, around 1940. 
and there's lots of roads actually in what's now the eastern Poland were built by the Germans in fact the condition of them is such that um, they survive really and were still being used until the 90s or even the noughties so anyway so we've got this the railway sidings are down here and we have lots of accounts of what happened at the sidings now today it's 34 degrees and it's pretty hot and you can imagine though what it would have been like for these poor people who are crammed into this these wagons some of them very similar to the way people are crammed into metro systems uh, for example so in London at, um, at peak hours and whilst they're in the, uh, these wagons they have been denied water there's no water in the wagons and yeah, I'll, I'll rather than go down here I'm going to show you the road and let's see the, the cobbles down here have got this sort of loose material placed over it and so when they got here they saw there was a pump in the station and they tried to make for the pump now if you've seen cloud landsman shore i don't know if he actually shows that as the railway station um he must he must have known it as being the railway station here we've got this is the road that leads to uh treblinka and so we've got this clumpity clump you can see where they, they've got it's like they've got these um uh, it's like square shapes and i was i was told today that in some the shapes are this they, this was sort of prefabricated but they often um they left the metal bits that were supposed to take out and that is part of the shape we can see today sorry maybe i've got a, didn't get the full story on that one or haven't understood failed to understand something or something along those lines so uh, I mentioned it's about to pour down and it will do in about 10, 10 to 12 minutes I, I would guess from my experience and it will be quite torrential this is very common here in Poland July is the wettest month of the year uh, that uh, OSP, Hotnice um, Straż Pożarna, so that's the Volunteer Fire Brigade, is there. And now we've got a shop, and uh, sort of very typical of a countryside shop in Poland. So the sidings were here, and on the sidings, we know that there were probably four or five um, spurs which would have been enough to accommodate even the longest trains that were there anyway i've done a separate video on that uh, there'll be a link below and you can you can have a you can have a look at it there is a monument here which is new and uh this went up um, recently. I think this is really a very good place. This needs to be commemorated and shown. The Dantesque scenes that happened here with people uh, trying to, running for water or that of the people being kept here and um, in these conditions. There are accounts where it said that the SS allowed people to jump out with buckets and to get water for the people inside uh, but there's other accounts uh, quite a few of them showing that people were uh, denied for or those that uh, tried to get the water would even uh, be shot uh, doing so and uh, we have accounts up there which I've read in a separate video of that actually happening this is above all in the times of Ian Fred Eberle. Above all, after that, when Stangl became the commandant, it, there was more organisation. Eberle clearly wanted to kill more people. 
and according to in the in the um, Treblinka trial, um, we have the record that Christian Viet turned up here and said words to him of something along these lines: "You swine, you're trying to kill more people than you have. You've only got a capacity for this many, and you you have." messed the system up. He actually used different words that and it's part of the different words I do remember. But um, I've got to clean the language up for a family audience. We've got here uh, part of the village of uh, Treblinka and today I had the opportunity to talk to people um, on a much greater level than ever before and uh, it's a pity I hadn't done it like this 30 years ago because I probably have learned uh, a lot more. When um, Landsman was here, he was able, uh, he, he just drove around and he met people and I was even went to sort of the places that uh, he was at. This is the location. I know I've said this was a, another video, I said this was a station and other people have said this was a station, not just me, but this wasn't the station. This was the signal operators uh, house location not house because i'm sure he lives there no um office where, where he was so here that when the train came in it would be directed onto the siding now when this was set up probably at the beginning of the 20th century that was so the trains came over the, the appropriate train went the appropriate way you've got lots of these things in lots of places to see us uh, signal operators ha uh, hut or whatever they're called uh is is not unusual right so i'm now going back into my vehicle so i don't get absolutely soaked not to bother me because i'm it is absolutely roasting and i saw yesterday it said that the temperature the air temperature in warsaw at night at its lowest point was 24.3 degrees which is apparently an all-time record and for those that don't believe climate science, I would say that I possibly don't remember what it used to be like. But uh, anyway, that's a different subject. But anyway, I'm really glad that this 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 is going here. This this really does make um, it's rather moving to me to see it. The railway line going up and like that. Uh, Actually, I talked to one of the people who was involved in the in the um, in planning it, and so this is the idea: it's the uh, going up into uh, it's going up the sky to show it's it's the end of the road. Now, it does to me it reminded me of the monument to the people who were deported to Siberia, the Poles, the hundreds of thousands of Poles who were well, not just uh, people living in Poland who were deported to Siberia, uh, which is in, in, the, in Warsaw, in the center of Warsaw. And uh, we're, put, we're putting this sign, Stacja, means it's a small station. We have this bit here, which shows where the, uh, the lines were, and the, the, there was the um, place, places where things came up. We see that the railway stations also got uh, here. It's marked down. So, and uh, I've come a bit of a way around, but the buildings which were there are no longer there. Um, so we have here a description of what it was like from one person who was here. He came in from Eddie Weinstein from Washitsa, who was here in August uh, 1942 and uh, what he actually witnessed. There's some information about the localities here. You can hear the thunder and uh, let's have a quick look at this as well. So in memory of Jan Maletka murdered by the Germans 20th of August 1942 for helping Jews in memory of Jews murdered at the Nazi German extermination camp in Treblinka.
Okay, I feel the rain. So now it's time to get in the van. I've had the first drop on my head. So now I'm going back. So thanks very much for watching, for listening to me. Uh, I've got a lot more videos on the subject of the Holocaust. The Holocaust is my specialization. Now, when I do a video like this and I'm just walking around, it is actually more uh, difficult to remember things and occasionally I forget something or make a mistake or say something wrong or something like that. When I do the documentary style videos, I mean, I'm not suggesting it's not mistakes in them. I don't say things I shouldn't say. I do say things I shouldn't say but uh, there's more chance of them being um, fact-checked fact <laughs> as, I, as, I, as I go along. I'm not suggesting there's lots of mistakes, but I'm just saying there might, there, might, there might be. Anyway, if there are any mistakes I find, then I put it in the pinned comment. Right, thanks very much. I'm now going back in my van. All the best. Bye for now.